Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. My main man do is right here. I'm the one and only big game dame. We got a Philadelphia Eagles win at home. <laughs> yes. Best, most fun I've had at the stadium since Nick Foles was here, since my boy was here. Okay. Um, because they won. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time since Nick Foles left, is it? <laughs> it feels like it, but the last, I think it was what, when they beat the Saints or something like that? Maybe like at the end it went Hurts. It's no, been a while. Yeah, I think that's the Saints was the last home, the last home win. Yeah, it feels like, and it's New Orleans again. Good looking out. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Your mm. overall reaction, and then we'll go into a bit more details. I'll tell you what. This this is the the compliment I can give the Eagles. I forgot I was evaluating. Like you know, I was watching the game, and it was just like I was enjoying the game. I wasn't like. Um, nitpicking every decision that Jalen Hurts made or trying to critique everything in defense. Like, just for a little bit, I actually was just enjoying the game. And I just started like, oh, man, you know, they're playing good football. And it was it was, it was was a breath of fresh air. It, it was it was nice. You know, it was it was like, man, man you know, may, may, maybe if things break right, you know, we might have something this year. Like, yeah. for the first, it was, I think it was the first time I started daydreaming a little bit, if that make any sense. Yeah, and especially, like, you know, fans always look ahead. You look at the schedule. Mm. Um, they're not going to win out, but the schedule is not as difficult. It's not murder as well <clears throat> like the beginning of the year was. Yeah, and, and, and the thing, you know, got to caution fans because, I mean, let's, we still have to be realistic. They're, they're not a very good team. So yeah, it's a, still a soft rebuild. And in. now my fear is, you know, they're going to be favorite now. And I don't know if they're ready for that. It's like, I don't think they're a good enough team where they can, you know, show up and win. Like, I think they they will be upset because they're just, it's kind of like the Phillies where, you know, they're not that talented. So even the team that they, the team that you think they're supposed to beat, they'll lose and you'll be like, eh, the Marlins. yeah, you scratch your head. But listen, Sunday was enjoyable. And like I said, the previous week, give me some more. I want, yeah, I want he, more. I want some more. Yeah, and for people who keep, I keep hearing, oh, well, they play the Giants twice, and those Giants games are always crazy. Yeah, every year, Washington always has the Eagles number. There's always a crazy game there. It's always a struggle. Even when Eagles beat Washington, it's a struggle, just mm -hmm. historically. Yeah, and and I, and I think that like the best thing you can say actually is like, what we're twelve games in, and you want more. It's like yeah. the, the, it, there's still some season there. Is like. You're just not like, oh, I got to watch this because I got to do the podcast or I just got to mm -hmm. make sure I'm on top. Like, I'm looking forward to Sunday. I'm looking forward to the Giants game. You know, it's just like, and to be honest, I wasn't expecting that when the season started. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's do three quick evaluations. Let's do okay. the coach, the quarterback, and the defensive coordinator. All right. So let's okay. start with Sirianni. What do you think about what what's happening with him? Listen. Um, if I'm going to blame him, I got to give him credit for um, sticking to the running game. That's th That has been what's working. And until somebody stops it, why change? Um, so I give him credit for that. So I have no qualms with Sirianni right now. So these last few weeks, tip of the cat. Yeah, he's a different type of person altogether. Um, he's definitely learning on the job, but... You know, you got to give, like you say, you got to get the devil his due. Like, he is sticking with what works. Yes. Despite what the owner wants. <laughs> you know, um, and you have to do that. And one of the things, you know, I always talk about this in one podcast. One of my gripes with NFL coaches is their unwillingness to change. And we saw that the first six games of the year with Sirianni. So, you know, you got to give him credit for that. So how about Jalen Hurts as the Jalen Hurts turns? Now you look at national, <laughs> the national, national media is so big. Yeah. This is the worst. Oh, this, people, y'all got to stop watching ESPN and all these stupid shows. You just watch this, okay? <laughs> all right. So what do you think about Jalen Hurts? Um, Kind of to piggyback off what I said earlier, I was enjoying it. Like, I wasn't so much in evaluation mode. It was like he was making good plays. And, you know, I wasn't thinking, is this the guy? Is It, it was like. I was just enjoying the performance. So I, I thought 
you know, the Denver game, he played well. The Atlanta game, he played well. Those two games I point to. But I thought this game was just as well. It was just like, okay, he's starting to show a little consistency. He's starting to make better decisions. And at the end of the day, you know, every quarterback's going to mess a throw with two a game. Not you know. in Philadelphia, though. <laughs> I saw Brady miss two throws yeah. on the so, Monday night game. And I'm like, but, um, I don't think this is the guy anymore, you know, like going off of yeah. Jalen Hurts haters. And o- overall, know. like I said, I-, I was impressed. Even when, you know, the Eagles took their foot off the gas in the latter parts of the game and to see him get that rushing touchdown to, you know, put it on ice. Like, like I- I'll tell you what, he uh, – he, he's in command. And, 18 runs. And it's impressive. <laughs> 18 <laughs> runs. Well, listen, when you let the quarterback decide if he's going to run or not. He yeah, gonna run. <laughs> he's going to run 18 times. And that's exactly, you know. Um, a young quarterback's best friend is his running game. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why you see the improvement in Jalen Hurts. It's not a coincidence. It's amazing. Like, And I'm not an NFL, none of us NFL coaches. You know, but it's amazing what happens when you, as a quote Eagles fans, run the ball. You know, it's amazing what happens for a young quarterback. Especially one with his athleticism because you put the defense in such a bind, you know. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like the Lamar Jackson effect. I'm not saying that's who he is, but you really make defenses – and they have to make a decision. Yeah, it's like you uh, the fly. Uh, do you go and when you watch some of the film of that game, the Saints defenders they just was they they didn't know what to do. And shout out to the offensive line, like mm-hmm. it it was they just yeah. physical. So let's wrap things up. The defense because they've been getting murdered this year. One of the historically worst defenses in the history of the NFL. Are they settling down or what's going on there? Listen, in this show we got to be fair and objective. And the Saints were missing two offensive tackles. They were missing their guard. They was missing Alvin Kamara. Their quarterback. Yeah, so, I mean. The receiver. I, I'm, the top receiver. I would hope that this is what they, they should have done. You know, so they did what they what they should have done is, is what I'm saying. Like, it's hard to really get excited about that because that wasn't the Saints. Yeah. You know, so, but. You know, at least they didn't embarrass themselves. Yeah, and the thing that you take away from that, Eagles fans, is that that was a good defense. Mm -hmm. That was an excellent defense the Eagles played against and, you know, put up 33 points. Controlled the game from from beginning to end. Controlled it. Yeah. Uh. All right. So, speaking of controlling, Mm -hmm. talk about some point guard play. We're going to move on to the Sixers. And instead of doing as the Ben Simmons turns, Mm -hmm. we're going to do – as the Tyrese Maxey turns, mm-hmm. because it's interesting, you know, before the show started, we were talking about his progress. Mm-hmm. Okay. You talked about possibly moving him, mm-hmm. looking at the way he's progressing. You may have something here in a year or two. See, but here's the catch 22. Yeah. And B, and B is the elephant in the room. And the question becomes when Maxey, gets to that level where it's in B that. Yeah. And sometimes listen, in life, you know, you gotta give to get. So now I'm to the point where if Maxie is in the trade, it better be a bona fide big time player coming back. Yeah. You know, but um it, it's a tough situation because the thing is you don't want to waste Embiid's prime waiting on Maxie. But here's and this is the thing Sixers fans might have to be patient and you might have to. And this is just my personal opinion. You might have to just take this time and just be like, look, this Joe Allen be there. Keep your fingers crossed. All right. Mm-hmm. Tyrese Maxey's the future. You can't win without a star. This kid's got a chance to be a star when Embiid's and we were talking about this earlier when Embiid skills, whatever happens when Embiid happens when Embiid, mm-hmm. he's going to be your guy. Tyrese Maxey. So just, I'm using this to a lesser extent because we don't know how this kid's going to turn out. You know, when Kobe first started in Shaq, it was Shaq's team. And then it <laughs> I'm using this as an example. I'm not using this level. I'm just saying. All right. That's why I prefaced it. Okay. I'm just talking about like what happened where, you know, at Shaq age, it morphed into Kobe's team. Let me ask you a question then. You know, the famous saying, you know, a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. So if you were able to get somebody that we can agree that it's better than Maxie right now and had to put Maxie in a deal. Are you reluctant to do that? Yes, because I need it. He needs to be a star player where we got, let's, let's put a cap. Let's, let's just say a soft cap on and be with all his issues and injuries and all this three years. Okay. okay? I need to have three shots at an NBA title in these three years with this player that I'm going to get. If I move Simmons and Maxi for whoever it's going to be, and to me, 
if I'm moving Maxi, that means Bill. That means Lily. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it'll yeah. be somebody where it has to be. So I agree with you there. Where it's got to be somebody who's for the next three years. Because I'm thinking if there's two ways you can do this at this point with this Simmons nonsense, you can either start looking towards the future. Where you're like Maxie's our guy. You cannot win without star power. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going to happen with Embiid because of all of his issues. Okay, you know, hopefully. By the time Maxie's up there three, four years, we'll have an older Embiid who's not, you know, banged up, not as athletic, but he's so talented. He's still going to be a good player. And Maxie will be the guy and you build, you build around that, you know? I, <clears throat> so it's the patient approach or you try to win right now. And that, I think that's where the Sixers are in the crossroads. And this mm -hmm. Simmons deal, whatever's going to happen with Simmons determines a lot. Can I, can I just have a second to talk about the Ben Simmons thing? That's something that's been bothering me. And it's not even, specifically Ben Simmons. Yeah. It's ownerships for these small market teams. And when I say that, I'm talking like Sacramento, Cleveland, Detroit, Minnesota, places like that that don't usually attract star players. Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity to get Ben Simmons under four years of control. Let's use Sacramento as an example. Who told the Sixers, Halliburton or Fox could not be in a trade. I say to myself, I'll bet you a dollar that Halliburton will never be an all-star in this league. I'll bet you another dollar that De'Aaron Fox may make one all-star game max. And Ben Simmons, if he just shoots 70% from the free throw line, his floor is an all-star, either conference. So you're in Sacramento and you want to hold on to these two guys who, by the way, couldn't beat the Sixers B team. And they can't get along, apparently. Like, their chemistry is awful. Ben Simmons would sell tickets, and I can see if he only had one or two years left on his contract. Okay. he You have him for four years. You're going to sell tickets, and you will get other people to come play with him if you're able to get him right. And you have four years. Same thing with Detroit, who's saying Cabe Cunningham couldn't be in a deal. If I'm running the Pistons, you can have Cabe Cunningham. You can have my next year's number one pick unprotected. And then I'm going to give you a bunch of bad contracts because I'm going to keep Ben Simmons. I'm going to get Ben Simmons. I'll keep Grant Olenek. And now I have cap room. Who cares about a Cave Cunningham and a number one pick next year? Detroit will be, they're, they're not going to be relevant in the next three years. Same thing with all these teams. I hear people like Garland and Cleveland. What do you think these kids' ceiling is? Like, I'm giving you a guy who ceiling is MVP of the league, who floor is all star if he just shoots 70% from the free throw line. It, it boggles my mind how some of these small market teams operate so let me ask you this and then we'll move on do you think in regards to that and what the Sixers are dealing with are low ball offers because of the situation or is it because people looked at that Hawks series and looked at those other playoff series and were just like you know what I'm just not sold on Ben Simmons period I, I'm saying it's strictly from a basketball standpoint yeah it's unintelligent front offices I mean, if you're in Sacramento, I'll ask anybody. In three years, where do you think that team's going to be? At best, they're going to be competing for the play-in. That's at best. Cleveland, three years from now, where do you think they're going to be? Those teams are DOA. Yeah, and it, All of those franchises are DOA because you need stars. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're covered in role players. If I'm in a I small market, get, give me – for four years, you will never get an opportunity to get a player of this caliber for this length of time, Period. And, and you're telling me Halliburton is going to hold that up? Garland? Cunningham? You get, like, it's, it's like little kids. You get attached to your toys. You get listen, attached to your toys. Uh, that's why I'm okay with Maury just saying we good. Like, just wait. I, I'd rather just go through the season with what we have than make a trade for, um, you know, the, the guy in Detroit that they were talking about. Yeah. That, I, who wants that? Is, yeah. I'm sorry, I just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we close, let's talk about next Eagles game. Right. Here it is. The Eagles' real arch rivals, not the Cowboys. We hate the Cowboys. Our arch rivals, the New York football giants. The G Men. <laughs> they just fired the uh Oh, that was brutal on Monday night. Did you watch the, the game Monday night? I I watched that oh, thing. That was brutal. It was Oh. It was it was just see now you know what you know what's a good thing about this though this is show me where the Eagles are at are they do they do they come out like they can just roll their helmets out on the field and they supposed to walk over this team or if I'm Sariana you know what I'm saying 
I'm saying let's stomp them so bad that we have to take our starters out in the fourth quarter and give them a reason to complain like they did last year for us taking Jalen Hurts out. That's the type of mindset I want to see if they have this week. Let's go in and embarrass them, or is it going to be like, we saw the film, man. You know, we get to show the up. The Giants are so funny because they really act like they did something. They won like six yeah. games last year, <laughs> and then they were like pissed off with the Eagles. Yeah. But here's the deal with that. Going into this year, and you know, because New York, they, you know, New York loves itself, New York, and thinks people care about New mm -hmm. York. No one cares about New York outside of New York. Um, just had to sneak that in there. So, but the interesting thing is, the Giants weren't good, but they were coming into this season like they were like some type of team with their their little six wins, no. you know. And Still it, a dangerous game, though. Yeah. The Eagles match <clears throat> up. You look at it, just the, just the Giants' offensive line. Are you saying trap game? Yeah. Now, who would have thought that? Who would have thought, thought that? With, that? With this coaching staff <laughs> and this, who look who look who turned in, who won the pony at the end of the race, you know, at the end of the competition. So, do you watch this game nervously now? Like, you know, like, oh, they got to win this one. It, are you now not only evaluating, but now expecting victory? No, because it's a division game. I still need to see more about how this coaching staff and how just, just this season, how they handle the spoils mm -hmm. of this season, the ebbs and flows. I'm not sold on that. It's curious because the Eagles defensive line actually does match up with the Giants. Everyone matches up with the our Giants offensive yeah, line. There's high school defensive lines that match up with this yeah. Giants we offensive match, line. The two of us match up with the Giants <laughs> offensive line. And, and that's so. what I'm talking about. You know, are they going to take this game for granted? And it's the thing is, I don't think the Eagles would have thought they would have been in a position this year where – they're looked at like they could take somebody for granted. So it's going to be interesting to see how how they come out and play. Yeah, and you're right. The mentality needs to be we're going to come out and take your lunch. Yeah. And keep it moving. If I'm Sirianni, I'll tell them, like, you know what they wanted to complain? Let's give them a reason to complain about taking yeah. our starters out this week. So, Because yeah. like, tell them what, we're, come the fourth quarter, we're taking our starters <laughs> out again. How about yeah. that? Run tell that. Yeah, so you know? so that, that's really my number one thing I'm looking at is – how do they approach this game? Like, do they do they really take the Giants seriously, or do they think they could just show up and win? Yeah, and it's it's there's something about with those two the uniforms, or and that, and especially the New York games on the road, it, crazy games, yeah. weird stuff happens. Hopefully, they get the win and then just leave the Giants on the side of the road. Don't get yeah. a Giants, none. Just go ahead, take care of business, and get out of there. Yeah, because they're not very giant right now. So, prediction. <sighs> This Giants team is bad, but it's a division game. Eagles win again and win the game by a touchdown. I don't really, I think it's going to be one of those crazy games with some wind and turnover and weird stuff. It's always these New York games is where the weird stuff happens. I think the Eagles will win, but it'll be like something weird where the Giants just keep hanging around and then the field goal seals it. So the Eagles win by like the Giants tie it late and the Eagles just walk down the field and kick a field goal. The inverse of what usually happens to them. <laughs> Uh, okay. So we'll see. My boy Hurts is going to win it late. Hey, listen, Get man. Get him back and feel Like good. I said, give me more. They they got me. I want more. Give me more. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see as the season turns. But I'm, I'm still not sold. I'm not sold enough where we can start calling wins for this team. Um, I'm to the point where I think I can say I'm expecting a win this week. I, I would be disappointed if they didn't win this week. And I, I never thought I would say that this season. But – yeah, I would be a little disappointed they didn't get this game this week. All right, so we shall see. We both picked them to lose to the Saints, so mm -hmm. who knows? All right, so we will see. So let's close things up. Any closing thoughts before we get out of here? Um, no, not really. Like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to this Sunday. I want to see if they can keep this momentum going. Um, I want to see the three people that we talked about, the head coach, the quarterback, the defensive mm -hmm. coordinator, you know, in a position where – their favorite. Yeah. And my closing thought is this. You know, we talked a lot of doom and gloom a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I think Tyrese Maxey, Jalen Hurts, as a Philadelphia sports fan, give us hope. Hopefully three, four years from now, mm -hmm. they'll be the guys. Hopefully. And we'll take it from there. All right? Hope. Yeah. Hope springs eternal. So let's keep that momentum going. All right? So that's going to close it up for this week on the Philly Sports Dish. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for tolerating us this last 20 minutes. So remember, you can find us on every social media platform that's available. Just look us up. You will be able to find us. Also, podcasts. Where you can find podcasts, we're there. We're going to keep this thing growing, keep supporting. We're better than ESPN. That's not hard. 
but we are. We're better than Fox Sports. None of us are. Blah, 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 all right. So and it ain't happening. It ain't happening. So to get the best conversation from a Philly sports fan and an overall sports fan without the yucks and jucks, come right here to our place. Thank you very much. Go birds. Yeah. Go birds. <laughs>